Hello guys, welcome back, PK here. So in this video, we're going to do this interesting viewer-suggested equation, finding both real solutions and complex solutions, so stay tuned. Okay, here's the question. The question is solve for z, that is complex number. Then we have z times i is equal to i to the power of z. Question is asking for the complex solution, so that's why we will not be getting only the real solutions, but we'll be getting the complex solution in general. So I'll be using Lambert W function. So this i to the power of z on the right hand side. This one is rewritten as now this e to the power of, this ln of i to the power of z. That's the same as e to the power of, pull this z out, z times ln of now i. Then let's talk about this ln of i in more details using Euler's formula. So the Euler's formula, which was e to the power of i theta, okay, that is equal to cosine of theta plus i times the sine theta. And if you think about when your theta is now equal to pi, that means we have e to the power of i pi, that is equal to cosine pi plus i times sine pi. Okay, so that's why the right-hand side is equal to negative 1. So we can say e to the power of i pi, this is equal to now negative 1. And using natural log property, we can write this ln of i in terms of its real part and imaginary part. So from the standard form of a complex number z, that is a plus b i, where a and b are real numbers. Okay, then ln now z. ln of z is equal to ln of modulo z plus now um, i times arc z. In this case, this one has to be the modulus of the z. And at the same time, this arc z is argument of the z, which is the angle. And at the same time, since i is the complex number lying the positive imaginary axis, so we can say for i, okay, um, modulus of the i is equal to 1, and then this r of the i. Argument of the i has to be then pi over 2. That is why ln of the i. ln of the i has to be this ln of now 1, okay, that plus i times pi over 2. So that's why this is only going to be i times pi over 2. Okay, so using this, we can rewrite this. Now going back to this e to the power of, now z, ln of, now i, right? This has to be the same as e to the power of, now then z, okay, times i times pi over 2. So we can say your um, zi, our equation, the zi is equal to e to the power of z times i times pi over now 2. Okay, then if you're multiplying e to the power of negative zi pi over 2 to both sides, right? Then we should have, okay, e to the power of zi times e to the power of negative zi times pi over 2. That is equal to e to the power of z times i times pi over 2 times e to the power of negative of that. To make it right inside is equal to now 1. Okay, then I'll be multiplying negative pi over 2 to both sides, right? Okay, then we have negative pi over 2 times z times i times e to the power of negative z i times pi over 2. That is equal to just a negative pi over 2. Okay, let me switch this order. So let me write this zi first. So this is the same as negative zi times now pi over 2. That times e to the power of negative z times i times pi over 2. That is equal to negative pi over now 2. Make sure we are using Lambert W function, so we're making a form of it, right? Okay, so that's why now we can say negative 
z times i times pi over 2. This is the same as lambda w, uh, the n of negative pi over 2. In this case, your n has to be an integer. So that's why your z. z is written as lambda w of the n of negative pi over 2. Okay, then that over negative i times pi over 2. Okay, this has to be the solution. And if you want to rewrite this, we can multiply i to the numerator and denominator. If you go ahead and do this, multiply i to your numerator and denominator, okay, then you should have now then 2i. 2i over now pi. Okay, then that times now lambda wn of negative pi over 2. Of course, your n is an integer. And if you want to check if the z was only the real solution, so if your z was only the real solutions. Okay, then we can just plug it in 0 and negative 1 to the n, right? Then that's the case when your n is 0 and negative 1. Okay, then we can easily say lambda w of the 0 of now then negative pi over 2. This is the same as i pi over 2. And then lambda w of negative 1 of negative pi over 2. Okay, that is going to be negative i pi over now 2. Okay, so that's why we can specify the value of the z then. z has to be the same as then now 2i over pi times one of them, i pi over 2. The other one has to be then 2i over pi times negative i pi over 2. Okay, so that's why one of the solution is now the i squared. That is negative 1. The other solution has to be now negative i squared. That is positive 1. So that's why plus and minus 1 are the real solutions. Okay, so pretty interesting question. So I'll be back with more videos, more questions like this sometime soon.